Father, oh God, thank you for tuning in today. And I pray that this message will bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there is something that I have noticed as a pastor. The Holy Spirit always moves on the Word of God. And I pray that as the Word of God comes to you today and as you receive it with a good heart, God will hear your needs and God will provide and God will bless your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Matthew chapter 11, Matthew 11, from verse 27 and 30, verse 27, the Lord Jesus said in scripture that all things have been delivered to him by the Father. Now, I like that statement. He said, all things have been delivered to me by my Father in heaven. So that means everything on planet Earth is in the hands of the Lord Jesus. It belongs to him. The authority, the power, and the needs that we need all are in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Everything subject to him. In fact, the Bible says, at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Praise God. The enemy that you are afraid of, bow before the name of Jesus. At his presence, oh, demons flee. Evil powers flee. That shows the magnitude and the level of Christ Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he went on to say in verse 28, and he said, Come to me, all you who are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this is a statement from a confident person. This is a statement from a man who is confident of himself. A man who, is, who knows what he's saying. Hallelujah. That is why he said, come to me. And when you come to me, I, the Lord Jesus, if you are laboring, I will give you rest. If you are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Now, I cannot make, I cannot make this statement because, hey, there are certain things that I can even provide for myself. And I believe none, neither can any man of God give you that assurance. Neither can any religion, let me put it that way. No, no religion can put it that way, that come to me. And when you come, I will give you peace. I will give you rest. Only the Lord Jesus can say that. So that means he means what he says. And for him to make that statement, he knows what he have. He knows what he have. He knows the solution. He knows the, the, the power of the enemy. And he knows that he is more stronger also than the enemy. So he said, come. And so your duty is for you to come to him. Praise the Lord. Now, perhaps you will say, oh, but I have been a Christian all these years. Well, I want you to, I want to assure you that the Lord means what he says. And so if you have come to him, praise the Lord, as long as you have come and you do your part, you see, Christianity is partnership. The Lord will show you what to do. And as long as you do your part, he will come in and he will show you and he will do the right thing for you. Praise God. Now, the word laboring. Now, laboring is a word that is used for somebody that works and works and works and by the end of the day or by the end of the week or year, you have nothing in your hand to show that this is what I have done and this is what came, came, this is what came in. That means you are laboring. When you work and you work and you work and you don't have nothing to show, that means you are laboring. Now, understand that work 
is something that God gives to all of us. In fact, the Bible said, the hand that would not work would not eat. So God commissioned all of us to work in order to earn a living. But here you are when you work and you work and you work, and by the end of the day, you don't have nothing to show forth. That means you are laboring. And that is a curse. God does not wish that you will work and work and work and have nothing to show. Praise the Lord. Now, let me read a portion of scripture to you from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. 18 says, it is, it is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils under the sun and all the days of his life which God gives him. You see, it is the will of God that when you work, something must come into your hand for you and your family to enjoy. But when you work, 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 and nothing to show for, that means you are laboring. Praise the Lord. But I pray today that God will deliver you from every laboring that you are in, in Jesus' name. Now, the scripture goes on to say, and all ye that are heavy laden, praise the Lord. So Jesus promised that if you are laboring, if you are heavy laden, come unto him. And he promised to give you rest. And I believe what the Lord is saying. So that means if you, you see, you cannot stand outside and then complain that, oh, no, no, he won't do it, he won't do it. No. When you come in and he doesn't give you rest, only then can you say, oh, I can, but he didn't do it. But I know, and I know, I know that he's a faithful and truthful Lord. That when he comes in, when you come in, he will do what he promised. So he said, those who are heavy laden. Now the word heavy laden uh, is talking about issues of life that comes to load on you. Issues of life that, that are difficult to move away. Issues of life that perhaps you have tried your own best to get rid of it and it's still there. Praise the Lord. So the Lord promised that when you come in, I will give you rest. Let me share a story with you, perhaps that will help you to understand what heavy laden is all about. There, there was a lady praying for the partner. Now, at the, at the age of 37, somebody showed up. And so when somebody showed up, he was really grateful and they made preparation to be married. Guess what? When it was just a week to the time to be married, now the man turned around and said, no, I, I don't need you anymore. The woman find a way to find out why. And then the man said, no, you are too short. You are not my type. Now the question is, if the woman is too short, why didn't, didn't you see it in the first place? And you have courted with her and all this time, and one is about to marry, then you say, she is too short. Okay, let's put that aside. Then the woman began to seek God again for another one. Now remember, the lady was age 37. Two years later, age 39, another man showed up. Praise the Lord. And they, they, they decided to get married, and when they were really close, uh, something terrible happened to the man. All of a sudden, the man was run over by the bus, and the man died. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is a really sad story. So if you were that lady, you would think, ah, but what is wrong with me? What is wrong? Now, that was not the end of the case. Now, another two years later, somebody shows up. And this time, the woman was wise and said, hey, now I will begin to pray more. I will pray more. And 
just as they were to marry now this time around they managed to go into the church and when the pastor stood and the pastor asked now we are about to join this couple together is there anyone here who have something to say concerning this then a woman stood up in the church claiming that the man was the former you know husband and they are not properly divorced so and that was the end of the case so you can see that this woman is heavy laden whatever he claims there is something wrong but i have news for you if your situation is like that tonight as i'm preaching to you this message god is coming to you in a special way and god is going to deliver you when we go into scripture you will find out that there were people who were, who's, who were in a messy situation. But when they came to God, God took them and God changed their situation. Hallelujah. Proving that the Lord means what he says. Now when we study our own Father Abraham, Father Abraham comes from a, a background of idol worship. In fact, his, his, his father was an idol worshiper. And I believe he was himself. Praise the Lord. But when God called him and said, hey, come to me. And he did. When you study the life of Abraham, God took him, hallelujah, from rags to the place of riches. When you follow the Bible, you will find that God then turned Abraham to a very wealthy person. Hallelujah. Abraham beginning was struggling for children, but at the latter end, God gave him plenty of children. God gave him plenty of properties. Hallelujah. This shows that our God is a good God. And in talking about Abraham, I like what his own servant, Eliezer, said about him. When Abraham sent Eliezer to go and and look for a wife for, for Isaac. Eliezer went with a testimony that, hey, the, uh, my father, my father Abraham, of whom I'm seeking a wife for his son, is a very rich person. Hallelujah. Now, when somebody give a testimony about you, that you are wealthy, praise the Lord. And in fact, he had proof to prove that the father, Abraham, was a wealthy man because he went with camels, loaded with gold. Hallelujah. And I believe when Rebecca saw this, he said, yes, I want to go with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, God is a good God. And whatever your situation, if you come to him and you come believing, God will turn your situation around. So if you are going through something, it is just temporary. He means what he says. And because it's temporary, he will turn it around. Now Ruth came in. Ruth answered the call and came in into the kingdom. He came troubled. He came worried. He came with, with the husband who had died. He had that in the background. But when Ruth came in, praise the Lord, God changed her status. And eventually, Ruth married one of the richest and the wealthiest person of the land, Boaz. Hallelujah. You can see there was a turn around. But that means that the Lord Jesus Christ means what he says. That when he says, hey, come to me. And when you come, if you are laboring, I will remove it. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are heavy laden, I will remove it and I will give you rest. And tonight, may the living God give you the rest that you need, the peace that you are yearning for. Whatever has gone wrong in your life, that causes you to yearn. Either it is your marriage, either it is your immigration status, either it is your job, your finance, your health, whatever it is, 
May the Lord intervene and give you the rest that you need in the name of Jesus. Now, I can testify about myself when I responded to the call to be a believer. Praise the Lord. I came in trouble. I came in worried. I came in, you know, everything was going, you know, upside down. In fact, that is why I came in. I was troubled and I was seeking help. And so one day I responded and gave my life to Christ and I came to God. And today, looking back, I am glad that I responded to the call. Praise the Lord. If you are hearing me today and you haven't given your life, give your life to Christ. If you have already given your life, I can assure you that if God did it for me, he will do it for you in the name of the Lord. Because he means what he says. He said, come unto me, all ye that are laboring, all ye that are troubled and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace of mind. Now, of course, there are so many reasons that causes people to labor. One of them is evil covenants that has been made from the homes that we are from. Praise the Lord. Now, in the days of old, from our background, before Christianity, you know, our fathers, all what they knew was to consult a shrine when they need help, when they need a spiritual help or physical help, they will consult a shrine. What they weren't told is the, the effect of whatever agreement they were to enter in with or the witch doctor. Praise the Lord. Perhaps they went in seeking help for the family. Now, in most homes, uh, in the days of old, perhaps there were women in the home, in the, in the house. Maybe there were plenty of women born in the family. And there were the, 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 the men in the family were not many. Now, normally, what would have happened in those days is that the head of the family will go to a native doctor and say, uh, we need help. We want you to help us so that men will be born in the family. Now, rituals took place and something was given in return for them to plant in the house or in the family house. But like I said, what they weren't told was the effect that would have brought later on. And so what happens is that, yes, men were born into the family. But then the result was that there was an exchange. The good fortune in the family, maybe there were riches in the family, that the enemy took advantage and withdrew those from the family. And so you will find out that later in life, those people that were born into that family will end nowhere. Some of them, based on the covenant, based on the agreement that was set in the family, perhaps you will see many women born into a particular family and none of them has husbands. Perhaps some of them will marry, but at a certain stage in their life, they will be divorced. Praise the Lord. Perhaps in a particular family, people will grow up to a certain age, maybe age 50, maybe age 55, and they lose their life. And sometimes people don't understand. Well, I have news for you. What may have gone on is that a covenant of exchange may have taken place in time past. Hallelujah. Something changed hands. Something was used in exchange for something. Perhaps people's life were exchanged for financial prospects. Or in some places, they, they enter into an agreement that, okay, this is what you need. We will give it to you. But then in exchange, they make an agreement that 
nobody will be able to grow and build a house apart from the family house. And so if you are born into that family and perhaps you have, you were lucky and you, things were going well and you wanted to build a house, moment you start building the house, then you activate an evil law and then you see all hell break loose in your life and everything start going downhill. Why? Because the powers of the family have now realized that hey, there is somebody who want to break through and they attack you from every side. Now what I'm talking about can go into every area of life. They can use that to affect your finance, they can use that to affect your business, your health, your marriage, praise the Lord. And the thing is that it can become a pattern because an evil covenant has taken place in the family and is working. Praise the Lord. One of my pastor friends and I were in Holland doing a program. And then in the program, after a man came to me and said, Pastor, what you said is true. In my family, people can make money so easy at an early age. But when we get to age 45 going, then all of a sudden we start losing the money. Then another came in and said, yes, Pastor, me too. In our family, age 50, then you see people dying all of a sudden. Praise the Lord. Uh, there were some women who came and said, yes, Pastor, in our family too. We, we, we don't marry. Marriage is a problem. If somebody finds a husband within two years, there will be divorce. Sometimes some of them may have two or three children and then they will be divorced. And then I know that this thing is true. Now why is this so? The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 3, verse 4, it says, For every house is built by someone Every house is built by somebody. You see, your family was set up by an individual. Your family didn't just start it. And perhaps you don't know what the person who started the family did. Hallelujah. It is, so is every village. Every village began with somebody beginning it. The village didn't just come. There was somebody who went and built one house and then people started coming in and then it became a village and it became a big city. And in the days that we were talking about, people who started it, praise the Lord, you don't know what they did, what they placed in the village. And this is the thing that I'm talking about, that evil covenant that comes in over years and begins to affect people. Now understand that, Covenants cannot be broken. They are forever. Hallelujah. But today, whatever is holding you, the Lord, because the Lord Jesus has given a word and a promise that come unto me, all ye that are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to show you that the Lord Jesus has your power and the authority to set you free. Even if your problem is the results of an evil covenant. Let me read a portion of scripture to you from Hebrew chapter 8, verse 6. It says that, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is a mediator of a better covenant, which are established on the better promises. Did you hear that? He says that Christ Jesus is a mediator of a better covenant which was established on the better promises. In other words, the covenant now that you have with Christ Jesus supersede the covenant that is in your family home. 
And so this covenant of Christ, which was made with the blood of Jesus, has power to break the evil covenant and release you and to set you free in Jesus' name. And I pray today that as I'm going to pray with you, God will come to your aid, release you, and set you free in the name of the Lord Jesus. Child of God, hear me. I want to pray with you. And so you say after me as I pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe as we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, will come in and hear and you will answer you. Hallelujah. So if you are ready, stand up. We are going to pray. Say with me, Lord Jesus, your word says, Come unto me, all ye that are laboring and are heavy laden, and you will give me rest. Lord, I have come in the name that is above every name. I am asking you for your rest in the name of Jesus. Father God, I have come. Grant me the rest that I need in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I break every evil covenant in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my spouse's house, every evil covenant that have kept me in bondage, that have entangled me. I lose myself by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God. I lose myself. I flee myself from every covenant that have hold me. Lord Jesus, intervene by your word, by the blood. Release me. Set me free. Set me free. Set me free in Jesus' name.